Pattern making is a boogeyman for many young upcoming designers. To know patterns is not only for pattern makers. As a designer, you want to have full control over your designs. And this tool, hopefully, is going to take that scariness out of the picture and creating your own patterns will be as rewarding as the rest of the creative process. It doesn't matter what is your work process. You can make patterns purely by pencil and paper and don't even touch a computer. Or maybe your pattern making is on the software using clearly digital tools. At a certain point, you have to create a master pattern. This is the most effective tool in that. This video will show you how easy to use this ruler to create a master pattern. The first thing, we're gonna draw the floor line and mark the heel height, which is two centimeters in this case. Now we're gonna line up the corner to the heel point and uh, we have a two third scale in here. We are going to find the relevant standard loss length, which is 42 in this case, and mark that point in here. We don't need to move the ruler. We're gonna, going to connect these two points and mark the short heel measurements right away here. This is, represents a short heel measurement line, and 38 plus the heel height, which is two. So I'm gonna need to mark 40 in here. Now I'm going to slide the ruler and uh, find this line in here, which represents the ball line and mark that place there as well. I need to mark here one third of the standard last length. So I'm going to use the one third scale at the bottom of the ruler and find again 42 in there and mark that line again and line it up with the toe line. This is not necessarily uh, relevant if you don't want to pivot your pattern, but it can be very useful. So now we have three lines which we need to actually connect. The two points will determine the directions. And we can copy the last copy lines to this pattern. So we line up the heel and also line up the ball point. The top line does not have any relevant information, so I'm not going to copy it. So we have the basic lines in here. Now we are ready to put the pattern lines in there. First thing, we are going to find the counter height. So we put the heel point here to the zero and measure up the counter height. Here you can find a mini spreadsheet and you can see the counter height, the bottom for 42 is 65. This is a suggested number. This is what I use. Of course, you can use a different number. So I'm going to mark here 65 millimeters. I'm going to find the center point of the, the ball. So this is roughly eight centimeters. I'm going to mark four centimeters in there. I have two new points to connect. Between the counter point and where these two lines crossing each other, I'm going to measure the distance. In this case, it's going to be uh, six centimeters. Take the half of that measurement and mark it right here. So that's gonna be three. If I continue these lines, I'm going to have the instep points, and I this is actually designed, but you can use these numbers uh, as well. Measure down one centimeter and connect these two points. Now we get all the design lines, what we need for a lot of models. 
and for seeing uh, showing you the functions of this ruler i'm going to to make the derby specific lines so one thing we can do with this as you remember this was four centimeters take this four centimeters add one more and you can measure that up here from the floor line that's going to be five centimeters and in the textbook case this is what uh, pattern books suggest for pivoting and again you don't need to do that for many models but some models might need it and here's how you can determine the feather line you put back the last copy you can put your pencil right here to the vamp point and you can pivot it down to the new line and trace the bottom it's going to result a couple of millimeters difference but that might be relevant for lasting now we can decide how much open we want to have the derby so let's say if you want to have it open four millimeters so eight millimeters on uh, all together you can put four this is the um, scale for the excess and you can put this four there also here and connect these two points So this is going to be the top of the derby line in there. Now we have to put here a curve. I usually use the 25. You have this uh, curve in here. So you line up like this and you get this curve. For here, you can use one of these top line curves. The higher one gets a little less curvy line the bottom one gets a little bit deeper so choose whichever you like and i prefer this one but you can choose the other one now we need the eyelets in here you have four eyelet templates in here this is 42 and above this is less and these are the bow shapes so here you have the curve that you can line up with that and you line up the edge with the, the derby line. And now you can copy four points and one just to mark the end of this lacing line. Now this is a design, so you can choose the same exact parallel angle to the vamp line that's gonna make a very handsome derby and continue this line a couple of millimeter over the guideline here we need another curve you can use the 25 or the 30 now we are going to the back we need a dog tail and we need to pivot this curve a little bit in and at this point, we need to give a little distance for the accommodating the heel contour. So this is how we're gonna do this. We line up perfectly and just move a little bit in and this part, of course, out. If this pattern uh, ruler doesn't fit your back line for some reasons, uh, you have another curve in here, which might fit better. Feel free to use whichever fits or just uh, hand draw it. So now we have the new angle here and continuing this line you have a little help in here which is this point so you can trace that point you can continue the line and now you can just continue these two lines in a nice smooth curve. I need a dog tail in here and I can use this sample. If it's too small, you can move it down and out a little bit so you have a lot bigger one, or you can just use this one. Now I need the vamp line. So the textbook case of drawing that vamp line looks like this. You measure this distance. This is 19 centimeters. You need the half of that and here's how you can do it very easily you just line up the half scale and you don't need to calculate anything you just put the 19 
circle in there, that's gonna be the half point accurately. Now you're gonna need uh, one twelve of the standard last length, and that is for uh, 42 2.3 centimeters. And of course this, uh, you can use another uh, measurement that's pretty much uh, up to your design. Here I usually mark down five millimeters and I need to connect these two lines. Here there are two templates for that. Choose whichever you like. So this will give you a very nice, uh, very traditional looking derby. <clears throat> now, I need to clean this pattern a little bit. From the vamp line, we need 10 millimeters overlap allowance. From the front, you need at least 13 millimeters in. And we have a template for this too, this point right there. So the distance between this point and this edge is 10 millimeters between this line and that point is 13 millimeters. So I'm just going to mark it through. And now I have 10 millimeters and 13 millimeters from there. I need to have a line for the overlap seam between the quarter and the vamp lining. And here it is the perfect uh, template for that. I need to copy actually almost all of these. So I have the angle, I have the 10 millimeters accurate overlapping between the pieces. Now I can move forward to determine the axis. And here's how you can do that. You can choose this between these two lines pretty much anywhere. Here, you wanna go for the first eyelet and you can find the straight axis. And just to keep it clean, I'm going to erase the lines which I don't need. Because of the orange peel effect, we want to have another axis at the back and we have a template for that line right here. So we line up the curve with the backline curve and we just copy this line. So this is going to give you two millimeters in between the lines on the top and 10 millimeters on the bottom. You can use different numbers, depends on your um, lining of course and we just kind of use the same exact curve for the back line and here we are we have the lining uh, axis now we need the allowance on the bottom so it depends on the technology you can choose your numbers and here how we can do it so you put the actual number onto the feather edge and you mark the bottom so I'm gonna use 18 here, go up to 20, around the halfway, use 20 here, and let's go back to 18, and finally 16 at the toe. So now we have the distances mark so we can connect these. Now we can extend these lines.
and erase those lines which we don't need anymore. We still miss one line from here for the tongue. And luckily we have a template for that. So how much longer do we want to have the tongue? The distance between these lines, as you can see at the top, is accurately five millimeters. So if you want to have the tongue, let's say, one centimeter longer than the crossing lines, you can use two of these, and that's gonna give you accurately one centimeter or 15 millimeters. There you go, three of these gonna give you that much. Now, how wide do we want to have the tongue? So for the regular derby, we are looking for roughly seven centimeters. So we need to line up the 70 millimeter mark to the axis, slide it down until we have the necessary length. For a four eyelet derby, I would say 15 millimeters is appropriate. And we are gonna connect, we are gonna trace this line right here. Now this is gonna be our tongue. So now what we need to do to give a little distance between this axis and this tongue, tongue line, and we're gonna connect this line there and also connect the curve with the axis. Here we need 10 millimeters allowance. You can put it on your pattern or you don't. That's uh, obviously a choice. If you use a software, you don't need to do this. If you hand cut your patterns, you might. So we line up 10 and just put as many marks as we need. There we go. This many should be enough to draw this line. And here it is. Our derby master pattern is just ready. Don't forget to label it and you can start making your shoe out of this. When we create a boot pattern, we have to create a last copy first. So let's say our last copy is gonna look like something like this for a high heel. And somewhere here, we attach a pattern for the leg. For the leg pattern, we have to measure the actual leg. So let's say at 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, and 40 centimeters, actually you can go up to 45 if you want to, we have certain measurements. So let's say the first measurement was 22 centimeters, the second was 24 centimeters, at 30 we measure 38, and here we measure 34. So now we have to take the half of these measurements, mark these points, and just create a pattern, add whatever we need to add in there. This needs a little bit of a calculation, not uh, super difficult, but takes a little time. Now, let's see how we can use the ruler only to create this part of the pattern and how simple and easy this is gonna be. So if you check your ruler, you're gonna see lines at 10 centimeters, 20, 30, and 40. So you can go up actually all the way up if you want to. You line it up with the paper and leave just a little bit here so you can mark the points. So before we do any measurement, what we're gonna do is put these little marks to the 10 centimeters. Actually, you can go again higher if you want to. And now you can either use this point or mark the other side of the line if you want to. And now since we are here at 10 centimeters, this is gonna be 20, 30, and finally 40. This is gonna be enough for me. And now without any uh, actual measurement, what we're gonna use is the half scale right here. So we line it up here. And the first was 22. So we're gonna choose 22 and put a little mark in there. So there you go, you have the 22 measurement in there. 
Now let's go for the second two lines in there. We line up the ruler and the second measurement was 24. So we're gonna put a little mark right here at 24. This is going to be our mark here. The third measurement was 38. So we're gonna put it right here. And then this is going to be 34. So the measurement is gonna give a curve just like this. So don't worry if it doesn't look like an actual foot. Uh, this is not a side view of your foot. Now we have to create a curve with this. So um, you can add a little bit here, depends on the foot model, on the actual boot model you're working on. So it can be a zipper boot, which needs a little less, or can be a slip on boot, which needs a little bit more. So at this point, you just want to create a nice, curved for your boot and finish it with a boot top, whichever you want. Now. The next uh, boot top we're gonna create is a side seam boot. There are several side seam models. One of the most famous one is probably the Western boot. So this is what we are talking about. So now we're gonna talk about only the top. This measurement is only the quarter of the girth we're gonna use. So let's say we're gonna use one here and one there. Since these lines are straight, we don't need any more. Now, let's say we're gonna use here a certain measurement. In this case, let's use 30 centimeters. And here we're gonna use, let's say 30 six centimeters. Let's do it. So we only need two measurements, which makes it super easy. So we only have to mark here and at 10, 20 and 30 centimeters. We can go, of course, higher if we want to depends on the boot top we are working on. And uh, here we have a quarter measurement. If you have the number, we only have to line this up to the right edge. So this is gonna be 30. And here, this is going to be 36. And if we connect these two lines, We have the side panel, we can extend it with the, the shape we want and then we add the seam allowance and then we are done. Mm -hmm.